Don't you love ice puzzles? No, I hate ice puzzles. So I guess you don't want to talk about love at first sight. That's our topic today! Welcome back to Crit and Crit! I'm Sint! I'm Axan! And I'm already getting on his last nerve. It's a good start. I'm used to it. I know. But yeah, love at first sight is such a common fairy tale cliche, trope, whatever you want to call it, story mechanic, I don't care. But the idea that, um, where's that picture of uh, Doug from Up? I have just met you and I love you. Yeah, but see, while it's endearing in a, you know, golden retriever, not necessarily going to sit so well with a modern audience as they watch a character sign their life away to someone that they know next to nothing about other than they have dreamy eyes. But it's so very common in almost every fairy tale I can think of, where the reward is marriage. It's so common that Disney has parodied it in their own films. All hail. All hail. But yeah, and that is something I kind of question because, well, a lot of stories seem to try to, you know, like, make it clear that no matter how short notice it is, the characters' lives have set them up in such a way that it's going to work out, and we just accept that as a thing of the story. It's mostly been modern interpretations that look at these things and go, maybe not. I don't know about this. And... I think either approach is valid. It really depends on the kind of story you're looking at and the characters involved as to whether or not this is something that makes sense. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it does not. There's not a guaranteed formula for this. Like, maybe you spend... Like, you go on your four dates and get married then, and that's still taking it longer than many old-school uh, fairy tales, who will just, like, I literally just came out of a hundred-year coma, and I'm going to marry you, because what else am I going to do with my life? And just things like that. But yeah, as you mentioned in Frozen, they make a huge deal out of you can't marry a man you just met, even though this was never a problem in any of their other ones. And... Honestly, I kind of wonder where that came from, because I don't remember seeing that as an issue in a lot of, the, at least the uh, Renaissance ones. Like, Honestly, yeah, my guess is that it came from them getting critiqued by people on the internet for 15 years about the fact that it was all over the place in their prior works. And yeah, let's look through this. I'm just going to look at Disney Renaissance. Little Mermaid? Yeah, kind of an issue. And, but with Ariel situation... The stipulation on the deal she made with Ursula is that she has to marry him. Or, you know, she forfeits her soul. Beauty and the Beast. She well, does not want to be in, there. Voice in the Disney version. Okay, yes, yeah, still. But, well, she's already forfeited the voice. But, remember, soul. It was her soul. Not in the movie. Yeah, that's why Triton had to take her place, remember? And got with her down into the... Oh, it's no, been a while. you're right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast... Belle sta agrees to stay there, stayed on scene, to save her father's life. She's not doing it because she wants to get married in the, and live in the haunted castle. And Even she as has, cool as that yeah, be. yeah, and she has quite some time to get to know the beast before they actually get married. Aladdin, um, Jasmine doesn't want to get married at all, and only says she wants to marry Prince Ali after she figures out he's Aladdin someone she'd already met and gotten to know a little bit, and he was already better than the other options thrown at her, and she had to get married per her father's law. Also, so, there was the whole Jafar thing. Yeah. But, just from those three right there, it's not the love at first sight issue that everybody likes to bring up and laugh at. There are extenuating circumstances that make it make more sense, and it gets overlooked. Cinderella isn't really setting out to marry the prince. She just wanted to go to the ball, and, well, she found that the prince was a nice guy, and he liked her, and she can get the heck out of this house. So, Love at First Sight, I think, happens more in the adaptation of it than in the original, because I don't believe it was mentioned that she fell for him so much as he fell for her. Yep. Which actually gives him almost less agency in the whole situation, except that he does make the choice to go try and find her while she's just sitting at home and going, that was a nice dance. Um, that doesn't 
doesn't work. But, yeah. So, why do you think there's such vitriol about the love at first sight trope that people know is just a fairy tale thing that you kind of roll with? In a lot of cases, I think it's because... Well, there's a lot... There's multiple answers here. The obvious answer is there are people who take that more seriously than it has probably ever been intended. And... Annoying turtle. Uh, there are people who see that love at first sight thing and go, yes, that's right. And that's what we should do. And... And darn the consequences. And that can be a very harmful, very dangerous mindset if you are not very, very careful or very, very lucky. And the fact that there are people out there who take that seriously, and more importantly, people who will try to take that seriously for others, and tell people, oh, you should do this, oh, you should take him or her or them up on this, oh, you should just follow your heart no matter what happens, oh, you should insert whatever here, that can be a very dangerous way to live your life if you are not extremely careful or extremely lucky. Yep. And, like, I also want to look at Frozen again here with, uh, everybody, everybody rags on Anna for this, uh, think about why she was willing to get married immediately. Girl's been isolated for, like, a decade. Elsa doesn't talk to her, they barely have anybody there who's not, you know, a servant, and therefore, you know, social class is a thing in all these fairy tales. She's had no one to talk to. Yeah, she would want to jump at the chance to get married and have somebody who actually pays attention to her and lets her feel like she's not completely alone in the world. A lot of the Love at First Sight stuff seems to be about, I need something stable in my life. Can I please have this? Please let it work out. Nothing else has. It's a lot sadder than I think people think. They just like to jump at it as, oh, that's just so naive and silly. Like, it might be, but for some people, you need that. Or, at the very least, you want that. You want something that is going to be that expectation and possible promise of goodness that has otherwise been missing for much of your life. Yeah. Honestly, the biggest example for Cinderella I can think of with Love at First Sight is from um, the musical. Not Into the Woods, I know, combo breaker, but the Rodgers and Hammerstein one. Um, at the ball, there is a song called Ten Minutes Ago. Uh, it's a duet between the prince and Cinderella. The prince starts it. Ten minutes ago, I saw you. I looked up when you came through the door. My head started reeling. You gave me the feeling the room had no ceiling or floor. Um, goes on a little bit. In the arms of my love, I'm flying over mountain and meadow and glen. And I like it so well that for all I can tell, I may never come down again. It's a really pretty song, and it's in my head right now. And it's annoying because I haven't actually thought about that musical since my high school did it when I was a senior. So it's been over a decade, and I still have the, st the stupid song in my head from We Lodge. Thank you, Rogers and Hammerstein, for that. But, yeah, I think that underscores it more than anything in the original Perot or Grimm story, where they don't really focus on Cinderella falling in love so much as the prince being entranced by her beauty and wanting to find her again. And I do like that Rogers and Hammerstein went a little further with this, and the two do actually meet sooner, though the prince doesn't realize it, because obviously Cinderella does not look like Cinderella both times. 
So even the most stereotypical love at first sight adaptation of Cinderella I can think of ameliorates that circumstance to some extent. So I think it's just people reading way too much into a short form story that doesn't necessarily have the room to say, and then they went through an appropriate time length uh, courtship, and then were married as according to social norms. It's kind of unexpected. You don't want to waste your time with that when you know it's basically, you know, we just want to get the broad strokes done. Does that make sense? Yep. So, yeah, I think that there... This is going to be my wonderful world defense setting. I think there is both good and bad to come from this trope. It, it leads to a nice story because people like to see happy endings, and when you're telling stories, you don't always want to decompress every single aspect of every single thing. So just knowing that your two characters that you come to care about, or your one character you come to care about, gets the ending that makes them in a safe and happy place is a nice thing, and it doesn't always need to be overthought. But as you said, when people take things far more literally than they are meant to be taken, that can lead to some very dangerous circumstances with actual real-world consequences for people who don't understand the difference. So, care should be taken, but I do think that there is a lot to be said for taking things with a grain of salt and making sure you pay attention to the context of things and to see how they really read, because two characters with the same circumstance are rare. Two people doing the same thing will have very different reasons for why they do that in many cases, and those reasons should be taken into account to get an accurate picture. I hate that I'm bringing this up. The Great Gatsby has Gatsby and Daisy's love at first sight, and that did not end well for anyone involved or tangentially connected. We'll have to do Gatsby someday. I will rant endlessly about how much I hate it. That's I have to? If we're gonna do a literary analysis channel, it's kind of one of the most analyzed stories. I know, I'm just messing with you. I have plenty to say about it. I have lots of material. I'll just, you know, have to spend time with unpleasant characters I don't care about. But, you know, that happens sometimes. As anyway, do. I don't really know what else to say about Cinderella and Love at First Sight, so... Any thoughts from you? Not really. This is kind of a... Kind of a rather short little, uh... Wrap-up for the story, I think. Because I think we're out of topics on, on Cinderella. Well... We found, the, we found the foot for the shoe, so there's nothing really left to say. Yep. Look out for birds. Yep. We'll probably return to Mario next time we do uh, some kind of old fairy tale like this. But, uh... what, about, what about the tale of the juvenile shark? No. Why not? Because I'm not letting you sing that to our poor listeners. They've already got it in their heads now. Goodbye, folks. I'm saving you. Bye!